everybody. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Sisters Podcast, where we give you our point of view. I'm your host, Tamia Harper, and I'm here with my spicy spice, OG spice sci-fi sisters. Got Sabrina Wood in the house. Hey. And Fran Taylor. What's up, y'all? <laughs> What's up? What's up, yeah. Fran? Is that we about yeah. to get down with some Picard. We're doing okay. today, we're going to get into the last three episodes of the Picard series, uh, episode one, um, season one. I can talk. <laughs> season one episodes eight nine and ten that we have grouped together and are calling the resolution thank you sister i appreciate that <laughs> so as always we're going to start in the beginning with episode eight broken pieces um this episode uh i loved this episode and um this one was directed by uh, here, uh, here we go again. I can't pronounce her name correctly. I think it's either Maya Vervilo or Maja Vervilo. And so forgive us. I hope so, please. And I will find out how to pronounce your name correctly, please, by the next episode. <laughs> and Michael Chabon, written by Michael Chabon. And Fran, you've got the summary for episode eight. The summary of this episode is uh, Picard realizes how far some will go to protect secrets that go back generations with truth about the attack on Mars, <clears throat> excuse me, are revealed. Larissa orders her guards to capture Elnor, setting off a chain reaction on the Boar Cube. All right, thanks, Fran. Okay, so you guys, let's try this again. General impressions about this episode in like three sentences. Sabrina, go. I love the deep backstory, and I love the way it came in and took us to the, you know, the right end of today. I mean, it got a lot of a lot of meat in this episode. That's my impression. That was so good. I'm so proud of you, Fran. Thank you. Your turn. <laughs> um, I like the background. I I I, I like the the way um some deep cuts with. Uh, Picard and uh, Soji, I, I really liked uh, that their conversation and everything. I was more, I was more of the uh, being on the La Surrenda than I was the Cube thing. I, I like La Surrenda scenes better than the Cube scenes. Yeah, I, I was a uh, my general impressions. I also loved uh, what was going on on the ship on La Serena. Um the Cube what was going on on the cube. I, 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 well, I, was, I was equally involved in all of it, but my general impression is that I love the um, in-depth character studies that we got to see in this episode. You know, so, um, oh gosh, I'm so proud of us. We kept it to um, a really nice synopsis. We're, so, we're, we're doing good, ladies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what about your shout outs? Uh, what, what things did you, what things stood out to you about this episode um, more than other things, uh, Sabrina? You know, I love the the locations that they picked out for some of these things. And so when they went to the grief world, which is like, oh, come on, that is a great name. And they were out there in that desert with that table that was going around. You didn't know what was going on. And they had the overhead shot. I just love that whole background. That was my big shout out. I said, I love this. This uh, the the second unit. We guess it would be whoever did the second unit and went out and found this location. Thumbs up. That looked like some alien crap from way back long ago. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that too. I did, that's a good shout out. You know, because it really leaves an impression on you, and you really do feel like you're someplace else. You know, so much Ooh. of of Trek. It's like, oh, there's California. It's like every alien world looks like California. <laughs> you know? Or you're in a ship, you know, you're in a you know, ship, right. or you're in some place. But this was like, we're in the world. No, we're not in the world. Okay. We left. We're, right. we're on the grief world. <laughs> Fran, what's your what's your first shout out? My shout out uh, uh, is on the ship when um, Raffi is proven correct that what she said about the Romulans and that attack on Mars and <clears throat> the talk between uh, Picard and uh, Soji. 
and bringing up data and everything. That was so touching to me, cause, you know, because Picard admitted, you know, that he had a hard time expressing emotions. And he did, for the most part. We, we rarely saw him express emotions on TNG. And he said him and Data had that in the background. And when she told him that he loved you, and Picard just, you know, he, he kind of like, oh, you know. So that's me. I love that. I think that's, yeah, I think that's beautiful. I had a, my first shout out, um, well, I started writing Elnor, you know, because like mm -hmm. when he threw his arms around Seven, you know, um, I mean, it's just, he plays that childish part of, of him. You know, he's a, a very deadly child killer, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? That's um, him. Right, you know, but this, uh, the the raw emotions with which he's experiencing all these things and the way he threw his arms around Seven, just like, it, it, it was just so tender and so touching mm -hmm. to me. Like, thank God you're here. Like, I don't know what to do. I'm in trouble and I need you. And oh, and it's horrible. And, you know, <laughs> and, and I remember those feelings sometimes as a kid, you know, you get faced with things growing up sometimes and you're like, Oh, thank God there's an adult around to handle this all of a sudden, you know, like save me. So that was my first shout out. Yeah. She had and a new e-chip. What'd you say? She has a new e-chip. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then um, my second shout out, I started to write down just like, first it was like, oh, Michelle Hurd and Allison Peel. And then I'm like, Oh, and Cabrera, you know, like the, the, this whole cast, this whole secondary cast, the strength of the ensemble of each of these actors is just so amazing. They made this really kind of a slow episode so mm -hmm. enjoyable to watch and it didn't feel like it was slow or dragging because they bring their characters to such a to life in such a way that uh, they're all unique. And it's like the everything that the little idiosyncrasies they do with their hands and mm -hmm. you know that each character has i mean that really brings a character to life in such a wonderful way and i that's my second shout out is is that that cast they're amazing they it's are I, yeah I, they gelled. I was, what, what, go ahead friend i think they gelled they gelled yeah and i think i think after watching nepenthe and you saw like the you know the seven year bonding of those actors in that episode you know you come to this one and you're seeing yeah and we're gonna do it again you know so here's another crew that and i think you know i don't think she says it in this particular episode but allison pill's character says i never had a crew before mm. <laughs> so you're definitely seeing that bonding happening there that we're gonna we're gonna be looking at years from now saying oh, they were so cool together mm -hmm. right yeah absolutely fran what about you do you have another another shout out um isn't this the one where um she goes in and she talks to him and billy holiday winds up uh canon for star trek and he's playing the music and everything he's talking to uh raffi and she said oh is that his Walkman? That was so funny to me. <laughs> yeah. The I thought it was table. brilliant. I had to yeah, like I had to it? do a double wasn't take it? at the screen. I was like, did they just say Walkman? <laughs> 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 she doesn't know ancient technology. We can see that. <laughs> oh, is that was H. that his Walkman? <laughs> Sabrina hurt me. Hurt me. Sabrina, what about you? Well, you know, I love the references that Michael Chabon makes in all these stories because you, I am a big reader. And so whenever there is some sort of a name given or a title of, a, of an episode or something like that, you know that Michael is going deep down into the well. So when he came up with the name of the planet Capellus, you know, I went right into, you know, my research on, well, okay, okay, Michael, where did this come from? So just to give it to you, Michael, that reference is from an 1817 short story, The Sandman by T, uh, by E.T.A. Hoffman. And it's the story of a doctor named Capellus who builds a mechanical girl. 
Oh, wow. Oh, Shut wow. the front door. These people are too deep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. That's, okay. I, knew you, I knew you were going to have the research on that, so I didn't even bother to look it up. I love this <laughs> stuff. I love this stuff that they bring out. I mean, it's sort of like, oh, my God, that's the name of the planet. Michael. Yeah, because I was going to be uh, I was going to look that up, too, because I, I knew it had it had to mean something because these guys and women never put anything in there that's unnecessary, that's extraneous. No, you know, everything means something. It's so rich. You know, mm-hmm. um, they're amazing writers, amazing writers. They are. Yeah. I mean, uh, OK, I have another shout out, but who's got another one before me? Because I'm going to save mine. Well, um, no, not really. I just, I, I, I was more, uh, more um, enthralled with the scenes on the ship, and I keep going back to those. And you really see what a good friend that Raffi is to him, because you know his PTSD is really, really. Uh, you you mean to him. to Rios? Mm-hmm. Yes, to Rios. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, to Rios, because his PTSD is really really working on him and we cannot forget we cannot forget reels and his all all of those emhs and emts and all that stuff he did a heck of a job with those too with the different accents and the different uh that's what i'm know, talking about that yes. was that was that was really something uh, you know and the way she interacted with him, and then she when she went and talked to him he told her exactly what happened that was something, you know. They gave us a, they gave us a glance of it in I think the second episode when he mm. got Rios and he said, you know, he said something about his captain and you know, and then we get the full story. And I thought that was something. And she was such a friend to him. Yeah. To Rios. Uh Raffi was such a friend to Rios. I thought that was marvelous. Just yeah. great. I thought that was beautiful too. I love that scene with all of the um, all of the holograms in there talk, oh, talking to each other. Like when the one hologram <laughs> said to the other one, "We can." Like he made he made the like the kind of little mm-hmm. he gave mm-hmm. it to him in his own little dialogue. And then, so, what is this about uh, Reels having overlaid his own personality on all of the on all of the holograms? So I didn't catch that the first time around, but in the rewatch, I did. So we were getting a lot of the real Rios in each one of those holograms. Love it. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Like, I was like, wait a minute, what? (laughs) He did what? He overlaid himself on all five? So so you're seeing like some different part of him in each one of those. (laughs) I love the hospitality when they kept making Raffi bend all the way back and around and get away from him. Oh, that was brilliant. That was so funny. (laughs) He kept getting closer and closer to her. (laughs) And she was like, okay, dude. (laughs) You are invading my personal space. Yes, he did that, that with a card. He that, did that with he, a card. That particular yeah. hologram really likes to be up in your space. Up in your space. <laughs> in the car was like, what? Wait a minute, hold on, you know? Yeah, you know and, what- and this crowd, this crowd of like, no, I don't like anybody coming too close to me, people. I mean, how many of them do we have in this crew? But they can't you know? take this man. <laughs> and see, that would have been a perfect, like in any other iteration of Star Trek, that would have been a perfect, um, if that had been a system moment. Like, because, <laughs> like, if that had been a system, but then I'm like, tag, it was a system. It was a system. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and she gave it to him. Like, did you see the look on her face? when he, <laughs> She was dude. like, dude. Step (laughs) off. (laughs) Step off. So I've got I've got another um oh well Sabrina, let me hear yours first. Your other shout out. Oh, my other shout out, um it was okay. Wait, I forgot what it was. <laughs> wait, no. Oh no, 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 no. Wait, um, going back to the beginning with the eightfold star. When I love when Raffi figured out that the eightfold star wasn't like conclave of eight people. It was the star. And then thinking about that, he was sort of like, she goes, you had to take eight suns and move them and the graphometric. And I was sitting there like, yeah, like, what is that about? Who could do that? Ah. 
So whatever this ancient civilization was that did all this mess to make this, going back to my favorite scene, the Greek world, and put that table there, I'm like, mm, all right, whatever they got to say, you better listen to this stuff. Right. It like it makes you uh, it, it reminded me of uh, that Voyager episode when they were like, OK, who's who are the board running from? You know, right. <laughs> like, right. Like, like, who's the out was, there that's this badass? You know, <laughs> they don't the move just they ran done, over you getting right. away. I was they just like, oh. moved around an entire solar system, you know, yes. <laughs> you know? like, OK. Yeah, that was not yeah. good. Yeah, I'm like, okay, so my that that put the scare of whatever was coming in me that these people could do that and they still got offed. That's true, and I think it was a really effective um, ploy for when we get to the last episode. Remind me to come back to that when we yes, get to I the know, last episode because I'm trying yes. to do this without spoiling it for people that haven't seen it. We're gonna go to the next episode, so I'm gonna act like I don't know what happened. If they haven't seen it, they've <laughs> they've been spoiled already. Now, yeah, you know, like, you know what, are you, what are you waiting for, people? Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll just put it in the notes for the podcast. Yeah, okay. Like, yeah. Note. So my my last shout out was when it's still viscerally one of my favorite moments of the whole episode. It was when Seven went all sorts of Borg Queen. Because oh. I am a huge board queen fan. Like, she's my girl. That's my badass bitch right there. And I love me some board queen. And when Seven, when her eyes popped up and did that, I was like, oh, yes, this is a natural progression for Seven's character. Oh, my God. And then I got like, oh, are they going to let her go? You know, is the board going to let her go? I mean, it was amazing. I thought that was so good. That was so worth it. It was so worth it. I mean, and, it, and the way she did that whole scene with those cables going in her back and she was just jerking with each one going in. And I, I was you, like, Jerry, oh my God. Jerry Ryan oh. brought it, you know, like, and I love, I love the fact that she's such a strong talent, you know, that, you know, in response to the early days when they knew that they brought her, when she knew, everybody knew that they brought her on that show for TNA, you know, mm. like, and it was basically like, okay, don't worry about acting, you know, but you she did. Right. Yeah. On Voyager. But right. Mm -hmm. But they but she did like she acted her ass off and like yeah, she, she, and she became she was so compelling and made that character into something like more than to be ogled. Right. Mm -hmm. And now, like, I love seeing her now because I, I think her strength is even, you know, doubled, you know, um, it's just, you know, not physical strength. I'm talking about like the strength of character, mm -hmm. you know, right. um, that she's bringing, you know, just I, I, I've really I've really become a big fan of hers. Yeah. I have to tell you all, I uh, was on a thread with her. Um, no, it was um, Twitter. And I said, and they were talking about her with her uniform and all. And I'm like, the thing about it is, yeah, she was over sexualized, but Miss Ryan actually could act. Mm -hmm. So that made it, you know, it, she could act. And she liked my comment. <laughs> and, I fan, and I fangirled out, of course. But she, I showed it to everybody. I was just, oh, Miss Ryan, you know. Yeah. But it's true. She could actually act. Mm -hmm. was, and I said that was obvious on Voyager, you know. So she, she's, she's a good actor. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So when she, when Seven goes all board queen, that's my, that's my favorite. <laughs> From that, I, I'm telling you, that was the scariest thing because it was just like it wasn't scary, but it was just like, oh, baby, now, now something's gonna happen. She uh -oh, got that stuff. right. Look out. And my, my sh go ahead. Yeah, my shout out, you know, some people have complained about the graphics and the um, CGI in some of these shows, but I loved the way she um, went into the, the queen room and then took that thing apart and sent it up and turned the ship back on and the ship started rebuilding itself. That was my thing. When that ship started to rebuild, it was just like that time in uh, Next Gen when they were like, they thought they had shut the cube down and they saw the cube rebuilding. And I was like, oh, no, they're coming back. 
I love that part when yeah. Seven put that turn the switch on and the, the the cube was coming back. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I never thought I'd be happy to see Borg again. How about exactly? <laughs> you know, but exactly. I was because you never thought <laughs> right it, because I realized that like you know as noble of a storyline as this is, you know. Um, it's uh sorry i live in the city y'all hey what can you do uh, <laughs> i don't know if y'all can hear that but i could hear it um yeah we can hear it uh-huh um as noble as a storyline of the xbs is you know i missed the old borg like you know i missed that enemy i missed like with the the tension that was brought about by the so when that the when the when the cube was activated and seven was up there i was like finally you know, oh, like, what? finally, like, bring us something, you know, but it, it really um, got me excited for future storylines with her. Yeah, it really wet my appetite. Like I could have I could have watched a lot more of that, you know, even though I know that this is a different show, you know. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> know. All right. So head scratchers. OK, so we, we got we've identified some great stuff that that we loved about this episode. So what about um, head scratchers? Sabrina, what's your first one? My biggest head scratcher is why we had so little of Seven as the queen. It was like she was the queen for like 30 seconds. And then <laughs> it was gone. I said, no, what? So that was my only head scratcher. I don't know why they bothered to make her the queen and then take it away from us so quickly. That was a big one for me. I mean, I, I didn't have a lot of head scratchers for this episode, but that was that one was I was also right there with you. Like, are you kidding me? She was literally plugged into that thing for two seconds. What the hell was the point of all of that? Like two seconds? Are you serious? Like knock something else out yeah. of there. Like knock like take out some of Narissa's scenes because like I'm really? telling you, Drive I'm telling I can't with that girl. <laughs> Those little CVS nails she's got. Like, what the hell? <laughs> did you call her some CVS? CVS you talk, you, nails? You talking about oh, like God. you saying Larissa's got some Lee press ons? <laughs> I, got some Lee press -ons going on. I don't know what happened with you know with with makeup there, but she must have come to the studio with her own stuff. Oh man! <laughs> oh, okay, that's rough, Dad. <laughs> it was getting on my nerves. <laughs> Carol, Fran, Fran did you have a, a, a head scratcher for this episode? Not really. Um, no, I, I thought I thought it was okay. I wasn't too crazy about uh, her being the boy queen again because I had my heart is already, you know, when they were on the cube, where they didn't show them as villains anymore. So my my headset around the boys has have completely changed. They've mm -hmm. gone like. Uh, 360, you know, like, okay, they are victims, just like they are victims. They were assimilated against their will and everything. And see, and I liked it when she told um, Eleanor what, and assimilate them again, and, you mm -hmm. know, take care of their rights and everything and subjugate them again. See, I liked it when she said that. Yeah, and I that liked was great. The fact, yeah, and I liked the fact that she wasn't board queen all that long, because I didn't want them to be subjugated subjugated again because they're different they're on their own now and they can do what they need you know they can be uh individual so i wasn't too crazy about the, the boy queen part i like that she took it over and she you know she went through the you know through the uh board tunnel thing there i like that and she got there you know i like that but okay. i didn't like her that's the next over. episode Oh, is it? But I uh -huh, like. Uh-huh, sure is. <laughs> I, like the, I like the results of what she did. I put it that way. Mm -hmm. Back up. I've already I just, said it now, but. I, I'm I like just going to say that, Fran, you're a big old softy. I am. Mm -hmm. Yep. I wanted I wanted me some Borg. I wanted some real some some real Borg. You I wanted know? some resistance is futile stuff on the water. Right. You know. I wanted Narissa. I wanted to see that thing come out and go right in her neck. <laughs> right. I mean, like it's now, so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, wanted like, them. I, I she, wanted Narissa messed up. Yeah, she I was talking smack. She was like, I would have yeah. been a good boy. Oh, oh, you think, girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted Your aunt Narissa is still babbling, up. so, you know, aunt yeah. isn't even. <laughs> and then, at, oh, yeah, that was when we found out that auntie broke the boy cube. Yeah, that was cool. 
Yeah. That's when we found out what the deal, but how that broad cube got broken. Well, right. you know, the people. Well, yeah, that was a good tidbit, and she was a good character, yeah. too. But yeah. moving along, I wish we could stay on episode eight, all this whole thing, but we can't. So, Sabrina, you want to introduce episode nine briefly? Uh, the the summary. I don't have a summary. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's right. Fran has a summary. Fran. Oh, okay. I thought <laughs> you summary wanted... for episode nine, Et in Arcadia Ego Part One, which was. Um, <laughs> A friend. Okay. She's like, okay. Which was written by Michael Chabon and his wife. Um, is, here's yet another name that I'm probably going to butcher. And my apologies ahead of time. Uh, Ilet Waldman uh, and uh, Akiva Goldsman. So Ilet Waldman and Michael Chabon did the, tel the, the teleplay. And Akiva Goldsman, Michael Chabon, and Ilet Waldman wrote the story. And it was also directed by Akiva Goldsman. Okay, um, with the Romulans in pursuit, Picard and the crew finally reach Soji's home planet and discover more than they expected about the inhabitants. Nice and succinct and brief yeah. and to the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and left out a whole bunch. So who, <laughs> go ahead, Sabrina. Uh, that's just one of the summaries there, but. Yes. Yeah, but uh, general impressions, is that what we're going to do next? Mm -hmm. the, you know, I'll tell you, my first general impression of this episode was that uh, the little the little enclave where they were living looked so much to me like the Daystrom Institute. I thought we were back in oh. Okinawa. I was like, uh-oh, are they reusing sets? I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> but but um, I did like the location. Again, I'm, I'm big on these locations that they pick for these shows because it, it really does get you out of the out of the mindset of being on the ship or, you know, and, and, and let me also say that coming into coming through the, um, the tunnel and coming into um, the planet Capellus Capellus uh, beautiful whoever did that, you know, drawing or the rendering. It just looks so special with the two moons, you know, the yeah. lightning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, they nailed it. So as soon as you saw that, you were like, oh, that's exactly what that little girl was remembering in the impossible box, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah, kudos to the opening. I'm liking these uh, introductions to these new planets. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, the, the, the artwork on all of the shows is just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Mm you know, just phenomenal. Well, I've got a shout out uh, and my shout out. No, we're doing general impressions. Oh, that's right. General impressions. Thank you. I've, I've, yeah. I've, I'm skipping ahead, you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, and, it, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, I really do want to spend time with you guys. I'm not trying to run away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, general impression of this episode was, okay, uh, let me get to the la next episode honestly <laughs> like you know it's the middle it's the middle episode in in the thing and i'm like uh, okay the, you know after i got over you know the the joy of seeing brent spiner and and the novelty of seeing different sojis and um you yeah. know uh you know different androids and um then i was like okay let's let's get to the resolution you know, <laughs> honestly, like, I mean, it, it, it's, there's nothing wrong with this episode, but there's nothing that makes me um, really need to watch it very, you know, over and over and over again, either for me. Yes. Now when you come back to mm -hmm. yeah. laying down a lot of exp explanations. Yeah. 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 Fran, what about you? Well, um, I like them going through the tunnel and doing all that and the flowers the orchids we and i was like well we just call them orchids okay all right <laughs> call them orchids and uh how the i liked it it was the board cube crashing on the planet. well just general impressions don't give us all your shout outs oh. now oh okay well it, it was it was it was okay i was glad that um the board cube got where it got to i was glad to see brent spiner and like you, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm like you to me. I kind of like, okay, well, this is, it was kind of fillerish, 
you know, it was a fillerish episode for me. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I felt like, um, although like, you know, it laid down some important groundwork for the finale, mm-hmm. you know, I felt like uh, an hour of it or 45 minutes, whatever we saw of it was just like, I, it, it, like it was almost forgettable. There were parts of it that were just utterly forgettable to me. I mean, yeah, I didn't need to hear about our, our, the two, the girl with the uh, get your eye poked out, whatever. Two of them were like, "Oh, please." So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I did love in this, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Go my um, my shout out. <laughs> they they had some they had some phrases in here that just had me on the floor when the, she called it Synthville. <laughs> <laughs> All I could think of was the yeah. Smurfs, the Smurfs or something, <laughs> Hooterville or whatever. You know, it was just like, okay, Synthville is that way. <laughs> and then my other one was uh, when she said homicidal fungus is, is a thing. Oh my God. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Homicidal fungus. <laughs> oh, G- Girardi gets some great lines, you know. She, that was that was Raffy. That was yeah, Raffy said those two things. Raffy yeah, said both of those. Yeah, Raffy yeah. was like, Synthville is that way. That way. And here, take this in case we meet up with your ex ex rambling boyfriend or some homicidal fungus. Fungus, yeah. <laughs> hey, Lord Jesus. Yeah. My girl is just like, no, she's cracking me up. So and yeah, took, the writers. Yeah, and that took me back to homicidal fungus could be could have been a TOS thing too. <laughs> Hey, there's a lot of TOS in this, and I'm going to get to that point in a minute because there's something very TOS in this show. So for everybody that always says, you know, TOS, TOS, you know how I love me some TOS. So I'm going to I'm going to bring it in. Okay. So we got a uh, one more shout out. Nobody has a shout out. That's it. We're going to just run through this episode. Yeah. Let's go right to the head scratches because I got a few of those here. Okay. So I was trying to make sure that my shout out was in the right episode, but I'll save it for the next one because um, we didn't have a, well, never mind. I'll save it for the next one. <laughs> I got, I got one for this one though. And uh, that was my first shout out was the orchids. Um, I did love the orchids. Did you? Okay. I'm I did. Sure. I mean, I don't understand them in Star Trek. I, I don't get them. I don't get them as a biological, but I don't get them, but I like them. Okay. You no, know? I don't like, I mean, I just thought visually they were stunning and I thought it was so cool. Whatever they did, I, like, I did not understand what they were doing to these ships, you know, the, I, and I fault the, like, honestly, I fault the writers for that, you know, like, uh, the, you're they not were dampening. It, it was like a dampening, a power dampening. Yeah. And, and, and but then they were also, um, you know, they, they had, um, they could shoot stuff too, you know? So yeah, it was very weird. It was very weird, but I liked, I liked, I I liked the biotech, um, aspect of it, you know, like Mm -hmm. that's always interested me, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I liked thinking about it in a, I thought it was a really cool, different way to think about, you know, biotech. You know, kind of like how and weapon uh, and weaponry and weaponry. Right, that's what I'm talking about. And kind yeah. of like how um, Octavia Butler always wrote her aliens as really truly alien. Mm-hmm. This looked like something that was really truly alien to us. You know, and I appreciated that. You know, it was um, scary. Yeah, it was scary. I remember. And I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, speaking of the orchids, mm-hmm. in the very first. Going back to the very first episode, the orchids in Dodge's apartment. Oh, they, right. Yeah, they really uh, highlighted them. Mm-hmm. The orchids that she had on that table, you mm-hmm. saw all those orchids. So I'm yeah. like, okay, orchids. She loves orchids. This is why she loves orchids. Yeah. They were, they were, in, they were in his laboratory. Right. Yeah, they were, in, they were lab, in the laboratory ship, right? And they were and they were in her apartment. Mm-hmm. And uh, my other shout out um, in this episode was the one line from Elnor. Like Elnor just comes out like because you're dying, 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. dude, for real? <laughs> Everybody's face just went, oh, okay. <laughs> and the car was like, okay, you could keep your mouth shut about that, right? That was a look on his face that he gave. Uh, right, but Gerardi was like, it wasn't me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she, uh, yeah, she's like, I, I don't know where he got it from. I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah, but I mean, you know, again, the childlike qualities of Elnor, you know, like, I, it just endears him straight to my heart, you know? Yeah. How about when he said in the other episode, I forgot, are you going to, are you going to assimilate me now? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know. Oh, so precious. He had no idea. He is. He like, I just no want to know, should I get ready? <laughs> <laughs> my okay. shout out, my uh-huh. shout out is for Allison Pill's scene where she figures out that Picard is dying and she's got the tricorder on him. And he says, he's like, basically says, what did you find? And she doesn't say anything. She just her face just starts this little bit of a tremble. And he knows that she knows and she can do that little tremble lip. I tear up things so well. Yes. Oh my God. She just nailed it. She's like, <laughs> yes. had me going. She's just like, no dialogue, just cry face. I got written down here in my note. Cry yeah. face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I did cry. Like I was starting to cry at that point. She she was the trigger. Yeah. She's so good. She is so she's good so, at that. She's yeah. Great. She's really amazing. She's great. Yeah. She's great. Okay. Well, you know, what about head scratchers? Let's get into them, you know? Um, I got, I got, I got one. two. I, I got one right off the break, and I'm go gonna ahead. go with. What's I'm, yours? I'm a, I'm a, okay. How? So you're telling me that now, like an artificial life form knows how to do a Vulcan mind meld? Thank you. Ooh. Like what the hell? Like did we just cross into fantasy territory here? Yeah, because nah, nah, nah. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not. I'm like I've loved everything that they've done up to this point, but they really pissed me off with that. You know, like I mean, there's just no way that you can give me a rational explanation for an android, even if these are like more than androids. You know, being able to do a Vulcan mind meld, especially since you're trying to tell me that you had all this stuff that you were working on with the engrams and you were doing all the stuff that you were going to be able to mind transfer and all that, but you had to leave that back in the office. And come out there with some Vulcan mind mill from from uh, from Girati to a positronic brain. I'm like, right. no, just hook her up to something. That would have made Thank more you. sense to me. I, that would have made a lot more sense. It felt like they were like, oh, well, Discovery did so much, you know, so much fan service. Maybe we got to give some fan service in here to make fans happy. But that was just no. wrong and inappropriate. That was like, Mm-mm. yeah, I wasn't having it. Fran, what did you think about that? I agree. It didn't, it, did, it didn't make sense to me that she could do a walk in my mail. It didn't make sense whatsoever. Mm-mm. So, yeah, no. And you know what? I didn't think the way that, the now this might be deep, but the way that uh, Brent Spiner delivered his lines, mm-hmm. I don't think he believed it either. I, right. <laughs> I was thinking he was like, because you had all that exposition about how much she loves Vulcan culture Vulcan. and even did this. And it's and I was like listening was like, to that. And I was like, wait a minute, you guys are some phenomenal writers. This is hack writing right here. Like, I mean, yeah. I, you know, like this is yeah. this is a rookie mistake. Like, why are you like it's like what happened there? during the production did they have to like cut and paste something in there <laughs> you know like they yeah, had to, because they had, suddenly had, had to had come this, up with a different solution you had this fantastic technology that you were working on and you don't use that to get it out of her brain you go to okay whatever that was definitely a head scratcher i have a second head scratcher though please let's hear it back in that freaking cube oh, even though i know it was all messed up and jammed to hell and sand was all on the floor and everything you're trying to tell me with all those daggone drones flying around in there, you don't have one intruder alert. Nobody could do one intruder alert. <laughs> Come on now. You mean drones with Merrick? Flying Merrick just walked on in there. No Narissa, joke. Narissa's hiding all up in the thing. I'm like, somebody do, like, but you know, like, you know, whenever you have, like, there's been an accident, what's the first thing Picard starts looking at? Status report. Right. Casualty list. Somebody tell me what happened on the daggone ship. I'm like, Wow. Drones were everywhere, but Narek is just running around like and, free and clear. And and 
Narissa automatically knew where to find him. Like, like and Narissa and Narika was right. Like, like all of the, do you know how big a board big, cube is? Big, right. How big it was. You know, yeah. I mean, like, it's like, hey, brother. I'm like, oh, stop. That that just pissed me off too. Cause I'm like, ain't one of these drones hooked up to something that could say there's two Romulans still running around on this bad boy. <laughs> 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 But you know, okay, okay. What I did love, what I did uh-huh. love, and it was just like so freaking scary. It took me right back to Girl Scout Beaver Brook in Massachusetts camp out when he was telling the story of the, you know, the, oh yeah, the skin of children and the skull head, and she beat it so bad till her heart burst. I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, yeah. ghost stories around the campfire. Right. Lord Jesus. Ghost stories around the campfire with your enemy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was that, some twisted stuff. You know? <laughs> I love that and part, then, though. You know, okay. So th- th- when did they get the gift? Was that episode nine or episode 10? The when gift they that the they just use your imagination gift. They got was... it in eight. No, no. They just nine. got it. Nine. Okay, so yeah, it was it was, the, it was at the end of nine, right? Yeah. Okay. And she and, and it was like, was it Arcana, 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 yeah. mm-hmm. who gave it to them, right? And she said, just use your imagination. It could be. And I wrote down, Star Trek has a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> you know, I mean, like there were so many incidents in this uh, final episode, and I mean, in this penultimate episode, and then the final episode, where it's like, we went into the realm of fantasy all of a sudden, you know? She was like, like, just imagine what you want it to do, and it'll do it. Really? Really? So where did that technology come from? How did (laughs) Bruce Maddox come up with that one? You might might wanna shift that over to Starfleet Command if if that would've got you back in town. You know, just imagine what you want it to do. And I mean, so that was another head scratcher for me. I'm like, okay, now we're we're just getting into the unbelievable category. And you just, you wrote your characters into a situation and you don't have a plausible means to get them out of it. You know, so we're just gonna bring in some magical elements and couch it in some science, couch it in, in, you know, in a, in a science costume, you yeah. know? Cause like, that, I'm sure to God that patch, cause I mean, you had some duct tape, that stuff would have been okay after that. <laughs> <laughs> duct tape it, works everywhere, thing. right? Yeah. It was like, she used it and Gerardi just happened to pick it up and it was like, oh, come on now. Yeah. Okay. Was, yeah. Well, okay. So the grand finale. Yes. The grand, grand finale, finale at an Arcadia Ego Part Two, which was also the teleplay was uh, Michael Chabon, written by Michael Chabon. The story was written by Michael Chabon and Akiva Goldsman. And again, this episode is directed by Akiva Goldsman. Um, Fran, you have the summary. Yes, Picard and his team are pitted against the Romulans and the synthetics of Coppelius in a final confrontation. okay i have one i have i have a shout out and and it's a shallow one but i really like it uh it's uh sutra's outfit my shout out is to sutra's outfit and it's a straight hearkening back to tos you know for real real. that was to that was you know william wear these all the way right there yeah yeah yeah, it was brilliant but then my on the heels of that shout out of that is actually Issa Briones, uh, her uh, wonderful portrayal of, of Sutra. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. it was so different from Soji and um, so manipulative and, uh, you know, just and, and, and seductive, you know, like the mm-hmm. power, you know, like she was riding the edge of the seduction, playing her. Yeah, she was, you know, yeah. It was just it was just really well done, I thought. That's my she first shout out. Job. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. you missed the general impressions again. But okay. Oh, Obviously, I did. You know why? Because it. yeah, because you got time. Go ahead. We got time. Okay, <laughs> we got time. Fine. If we fine. Okay. So my general impression that as a wrap up, uh, pretty damn good. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, I I was satisfied. I felt like the story came to a, a satisfactory conclusion, um, and it had me looking forward to what's coming next. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fran? Same thing here. Oh, go ahead, no, Bridget. Right. You always okay. get the last one. Just go ahead. Well, um, my um, thing was, I knew that Riker was going to show up. I knew it. 
because when he went to when Picard went to the Nepenthe, he he made it a a, a thing to say he was in the reserves. I'm like, okay, we're gonna see him again. So mm-hmm. I I knew my general impression was okay. Starfleet come Starfleet comes to rescue, and they did. So basically, they did. Um, that was my general impression. But losing Picard was... Wait, 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 wait. General impressions. Yeah, that's what I'm oh, saying. Oh, okay. All right, all right. I thought you, you were know, going to a different that... one. My bad. No, 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 no. Um, Stop, please come to the rescue. And we lose Picard. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> She's it up sorry. now. I'm sorry. I derailed you. <laughs> All right. My general impression of this ending, which is like the finale of, you know, the first Picard season, this has got to be big doings, and they did it. I, it was yeah. a great ending. I thought this finale was right up there with the finale for TNG, which I think is one of the most emotionally satisfying of all the endings of the Star Trek franchises. You know, my heart was broken at the end of DS9. Uh, Voyager, they kind of just let me down. You know, it was like, okay, okay, we're getting, we're finally, 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 we're getting to Earth. And then it was like, show's over. Wait, no, where's the party? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, TOS didn't even have an ending. But this <laughs> one was very satisfying. It was like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Said goodbye to Data. They brought it, they went back to Nemesis. Finish that mess up. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get into let's get into the shout outs then. You know, Fran, come on. Come on with your shout out. Um my shout out, what I really liked, um, which brought me to tears, uh, data and and Picard talking in that in that room, in that simulation. Mm-hmm. It was it, it just brought me to tears. And even when I look at it again, it does the same thing. He had me too. A, You're not you know, alone. <laughs> you are not alone. <laughs> because, Can't watch it. Can't watch it without crying. You no. know, because in Nemesis, it that wasn't satisfactory to me. That ending of data wasn't satisfactory. I mean, they just blew him up. And I was like, so that's why I only looked at that movie once because I didn't like what they did there. However, this was a great, I thought, send off for for the character and for Picard and Data to, say, to actually say goodbye and their I love yous and all that. It was, you know, it was just I I it was magnificent, I thought. I thought it was a great send off, um, as far as it is. And and I saw somewhere where um Patrick Stewart said it was really hard for him to to do that scene where he stood up and he looked back and said, "Goodbye, Commander." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So because that was, it was it was it was heartfelt. You could just just see it and feel it. Well, I could see it and feel it. So that was my my highlight of that whole thing was that conversation between the two of them. So what now maybe he won't have these. You know, he won't have these. This survivor's guilt and those dreams that he keeps having yeah. because there was really right. no closure. Right. I'm right. Done. Yeah. Good point. Sabrina? Well, you know me. I love to research my titles. And um, here we go again with another beautiful one, you know, et in Arcadia Ergo. And that is the title of a French Baroque painting painted back in 1637 by Nicolas Poussin. And in the painting, they there are these shepherds and a shepherdess standing around a tomb in this idealized, uh, uh, idyllic kind of setting, talking about the death of this person in the in the tomb. And so that scene with Picard dying, and Raffi and and everybody around him just was a, was a complete take from that painting, and that's the title. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I really appreciated that. I love all the, you know, times that they go into art history, they go into literature, and, and they did it here where they they basically they basically gave you the composition of that painting in that scene. But not exact, but pretty close. Loved that stuff. Loved yeah. it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's so beautiful. So beautifully oh, the, done. The scene, the dialogue was just unbelievable. Ah. All of them around him, and he and he dies. And what was the last thing he said? The last things, Raffi, Raffi, you were right. You were right. You were right. About what? About what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a that was a beautiful scene. Oh. And uh, yeah, I mean, really powerful. I mean, I I wrote down on my notes just big baby tears. Mm. <laughs> you know, like I was boohoo. Oh. It was so touching. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't have a lot to say about that, except for that I was so moved. But, you know, so I'm going to I'm going to give another shout out from a different part of this episode, um, Mm -hmm. which was when Picard is flying the La Serena (laughs) and the look of joy that comes over his face when he takes off. He's just like he looked like a little kid. I loved it. It was amazing. (laughs) he was back in the saddle again right i was like oh and it felt so right because i mean we've never even though we know that he can fly a ship because that's in his training and he used to do it we've never seen him fly yeah i mean i mean like not a big controls yeah well that's true but we've seen it like like one or two times you don't get it's a a rare sight rare sight you know we don't get to see it a lot yeah. No, he was saying, you know, I haven't done this in a long time. Long it, time. Whoosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have another, anybody else have another shout out? I have one. I, I loved the dialogue at the end, you know, even though it got a little crazy and all the ships and, you know, whatever, whatever. We knew it was going to be this big face off and here come the orchids and I'm like, oh my God, whatever. I love R- Riker coming back. But what I loved was what he said. And there was one line that I wrote down and it says he was telling, he was saying that they were like little children and the only teachers they've had are a couple of hermits, hermits. and fear. <laughs> I love that line. That was, fear, that, was is an inc- that was fear is an incompetent teacher. Yes. There was and so was many. Like, oh. That last, that there was, this episode was rich in, wonderful dialogue and really quotable dialogue that yeah. I just finally stopped trying to write it down. Honestly, you know, I was like, I just, I just got to love it every time I watch it, you know, because Riker's dialogue on that, um, when he's coming to, uh, when he's facing, um, uh, well, oh. general, O. well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he said, or whatever you're calling yourself today. Yeah. <laughs> Commodore, <laughs> Commodore, you know, whatever. ass. ass. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I loved, I loved that. I love it. My boy came in, weapons hot, deflectors to full. Like, yeah, he oh, said he's, he really? said he's on the. He said right now I'm on the bridge of the toughest, fastest, most powerful ship Starfleet has ever put into service. I was mm. like, go ahead, Riker. Mm. He's like, and I've got a fleet of them. I was like, ooh, three snaps up. So what you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do? Where's the lie? <laughs> Where's the lie? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the lie, Riker? Where's the lie in that? <laughs> okay, so fun. any any more shout outs on that? We want to see the Zhang Zhu, the Zhang Shu again. We want to see that ship again. Because I was like, oh, you need to bring that ship back. Yeah, I have one other shout out. It's kind of like a, it was another funny part when Picard and Gerardi get back on the ship and it's just the two of them, you know, and he, they, and she's like, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are you going to, there was one point, you know, he just, he just shoot her into the sea. He was like, come on, doctor. Just made it, made get it go up, to the seat. Get, up, just come on, man. get over there and give me the report. I, I just come cracked on, up. He, he just <laughs> like, come on, doctor. Come on, doctor. <laughs> status, status. <laughs> okay. I do have some head scratchers in this episode. Yeah. Is, are we safe to move on to head scratchers now? Mm, yep. Mm. Okay. So... How does Agnes know how to start working stuff on the ship now? I mean, have we ever seen her start paying attention to how to fly this thing? Like <laughs> Picard once? at least explained that he was watching. Right. Like, I mean, all of a sudden Agnes is touching stuff and moving screens around and reading stuff like she knows what she's doing. I was like, well, okay. I'm going to say that it's a, it's a, it's a monitor and she could figure it out because she's been in this world forever. That's the only way I can let it go because I said the same thing. How does she know what's going on? And she couldn't even she couldn't even turn the transporter on. Right. All you gotta do is flip the dials up. 
<laughs> I can transport your ass up. Come on now. <laughs> right? Okay. All right. So it's not just me. Like, okay, I'm not the only one, but I'm going to take your um, explanation for that and, and give them. And just let it go. I'm just going to let it ride. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can, can I bring I in just... my... Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. My TOS moment here. Yes. You need to go back to and give credit to TOS with... And it actually was kind of like in the previous episode when he brought out the golem. All I could think about was what little girls are made of mm-hmm. when oh, they put that big thing of clay the on table. there, yeah. and Doctor Corby put himself inside that thing. I was yes. like, okay, yes. now wait a minute, wait a minute. We've seen this before, and yep. then I also mm-hmm. thought about turnabout intruder. Yeah, I was like, "Oh my God, they're transferring minds into bodies." Mm-hmm. We've done this mess, okay? TOS, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. 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 Right, and thank that you. was a nice call out. That was a nice callback. Somebody go back and watch what little girls are made of. That was really truly a golem. Yeah, right. That was a on true that golem. on that on that round thing spinning right. around and blah, blah, they blah, turned blah. that thing yeah. around and it was Kirk and that was Kirk. <laughs> All over again. Wearing a towel. Ooh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So, we, um, you know, I just want to ask this question. Is it, how much do you hate Narek? Oh, my God. I hate so, Narek. I hate what him. happened to him? He didn't get killed. He did not get killed. It's like, where did he, what's the deal with him? Well, Please don't bring Siobhan, that boy back for season two, because I will kill him Siobhan, myself. Shabon said that they cut out the part where they had they was leading him off. The Federation was leading him off to, you know, they, they got him and they was leading him off to wherever okay. they were going to take him. But the see, Federation got him. Mm, well, that's what he says. But if I don't see it on screen, oh, then no. that could, they can could, they can write anything they want. That means they, they can, can bring that ugly thing back. You know, <laughs> I hope but, they don't. I, I, I can't. I, I sh- I, I can't with his character. It. I just want to leave him behind, you know? Him and his sister. That she went over the side, so we know she's gone. Right. Like, thank God. Because of the, on the previous episode, it was like, I didn't see her die. I just saw mm-hmm. a whole bunch of Borg on top of her, right? But we didn't well, we, see her die. I was, we you saw could, her. I will we say. We saw her transport out, though. We did see that. We saw her transport out. The, both of these actors did what they needed to do because we hate them intensely. So yes. <laughs> kudos for that, you know, Treadway and I forget the Nerissa's name. They did a very good job, but I really they do did. not need to see these two Romulans ever again. Right. Family wash out that Narek was and all the little kinky sister brother stuff. Like, Oh, take it all out of here, please. <laughs> so it's official. Y'all think the Romulans are now enemies again. Is that correct? Would that be what, would that be the hmm. conclusion? I don't know because it's hmm. a it's not just Romulans. It was really the the Jat Vash, you know. Yes, it, it, it was a, it, they and they were secret even from their own people, you know. I know, but they but they, they had a fleet of ships. The Romulans, right, but the, that the, doesn't. But the Jat the Vash has been around for millennia. They they oh, they've oh, got okay, they've got okay, a fleet okay, of ship by now a fleet of ships by now eighteen yeah oh you know God. they've got it they've got enough she's got control over you know she's been building they've been building up their power quietly in in the dark I mean you know the Tal Shiar didn't know about them I think we haven't seen the end of them I don't think we've I, seen the end of them either but no, I'm not saying but what I'm saying is that like I don't think like all like the Romulan government. Is you, you know not gonna? It's probably not gonna back the Jat Vash, but they're gonna oh, have no, to worry this is about a, this them. Is a, this you see what I'm saying? So I don't know that we can say. Yeah, I don't know that we can say that Romulans in general are gonna be the bad guys, but certainly the Jat Vash are. Okay, I so want them Jot, to bring the, back. Go ahead, man. So y'all saying that the uh, those people had two hundred and something ships. That the Romulans had no idea that they had. I'm saying it's and possible. I'm just saying it's entirely possible. Secret societies like that can have a lot of power and influence without other people knowing. Or they could have just stolen them right from out from underneath their noses. Well, they didn't even have to steal them. They could have just said, you know, hey, a general O says, let's go. 
They didn't right. even know where they were going. They didn't, yeah, they didn't know that like she's working for the Jat Vash and not at the behest of the Romulan government, what's left of it. But the Romulans are, they're there. I think we're going to see them again because we, we kept, we kept Comp General, oh, he didn't kill her. You know, they didn't have to fight. She's still around. Mm-hmm. I don't and think they're the, gone, but I think this messes mm-hmm. up what little, that little, it was a, a curious peace thing they had with them. I think yeah. it oh. messed that up. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I that's think it, gone. I think it really, I think it really messed it up. Yeah, that, I think that's, I think you're right about that. Absolutely. Well, and, they, and they had it because of the cube and the cube is gone. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and one last little thing I just want to say, like, I, that last bit of dialogue uh, between Picard and Soji at the end of the episode, did that sound like really contrived to anybody else? You know, because for me, it sounded like putting a bow on the end of the episode, like, well, you see now, you know, and now this is, and now we, um, we have our rights again and we can travel and the mm-hmm. ban on us has been repealed. So, yay. You know, no, I just, I thought, it, no, I thought it was cool because he said in me, because he was saying like, I am a sin too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I like that part, but the, the rest yeah. leading up to that just sounded like this old school, like you see Timmy, you know, type <laughs> of portrayal. No, I, I can't. That didn't bother me. I like it. I like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe yeah. I'm alone in that. I was one. surprised to see her come back with them. Yeah. Yeah. Like if she's going to be part of the show next year, if she's oh, on yeah, the crew. Oh yeah, she will. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I think she has third billing. I yeah, she she's a great character, but I, I just want to see what is going to be the thing next year. Next year. Yeah. And one little other shout out when. Um, they are when in the simulation uh, with uh, Data and Picard. When Picard and he's when Picard says, "Is it time for me to go? Do I have to leave?" And Data says, "Yes." And the door opens, and you mm-hmm. hear the Enterprise door sound of the door <laughs> opening right there. Did you guys notice that? Did you catch that? I didn't. I'll have to go I back. Did I did not catch oh, that. Oh, it's brilliant! Not. It was so well done. It was just lovely. The ho- the hologram de- door. Right. That one. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, like, no, no, like, like, no, like the regular, the regular. Every whoosh? time somebody, oh. the, the little. Whoosh. Can we get like lower decks and stop making the sounds? I know, right? <laughs> whoosh, whoosh, no, whoosh. no, it's like the. <laughs> whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> it's more like a. <laughs> Where's the lie? So, uh, so <laughs> okay, so you know, one thing we didn't ask uh, at all. Um, was, uh, you know, where was our humanity? Like, what what did we relate to, you know, in these episodes? We didn't even get to that discussion and we are running out of time. Um, but I think like uh, the so, uh, Soji really summed it up in um, when she first saw, uh, when she first meets Dr. Girardi in episode eight, um, and she asks her, you know, like when they're they're sitting together and she says, you know, uh, well, what do you think? Like now, am I real? You know, and she asks mm-hmm. her, she says, sitting here right near, right here, right now, am I human to you? Mm-hmm. And listening to that when I watched it this time, because I just watched these again this morning, uh, really impacted me because I feel like what our country is going through right now um, this is exactly it. This is the the question that I that I feel like I want to ask folks. You know, mm-hmm. uh, especially folks who are backing this man. You know, to be president. You know, still like, am I real to you? You know, yeah. um, or am I? Are these you know, numbers one, or, that you're one, is, is two hundred and twenty seven thousand real to you? Right, or am I just one third a person, one third a human being? Mm-hmm. Five hundred and twenty five you know? children separated from their parents. Real. All to right, you. no. Yeah. I'm not going to get political, but yeah, is that real to anybody? No, here? so, you know, that was a, I thought that really resonated because I really believe yeah. that right now, human beings need to see each other, no matter, you know, as real to each other. Yeah. Yeah. What resonated with me was the need for crew. Just like you guys are my crew. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they could not, Picard could not have done any of that without them. Every single one of them was essential to getting that done. You know, they needed every single one of them or the mission would have failed. So that yeah. really got me. There was a crew again. Yeah. Fran, did you have an overarching theme that resonated with you? No, 
it was just a, it was like you know I, I said mine the ones mm -hmm. with data and uh and picard and the thing that's that was it i that was my thing there and as far as uh you know as far as being political and everything star trek has been political ever since 1966. that's and right that's not going anywhere and it normally uh, mirrors what's going on at whatever whatever series is going on it it mirrors what's going on generally at that time yeah yeah so it's it's, it's pretty it's right there very true very true yes. so i say in general picard season one is done do we give it a sci-fi sisters three snaps in a circle go yeah. <laughs> that's what i'm yeah. talking about yep that's what i'm talking about because it where's was the wonderful. lie where's the lie <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and you know what we didn't have to criticize it half the time we didn't have well, to say like yeah you know, i had some issues with it and this, well uh, we do know. have some issues overall yeah. we had some yeah, issues like it. because i, I said it. all the time we didn't have all to criticize time. it all the, all time. the time but like number one we take them to task and we're going to hold them accountable for killing off all the black people what's Left with that right, all Girl. throughout the season Come all throughout now. the season so yep. se season two y'all y'all bet got to do a much well, better job better, at that better because the sci-fi sisters will come after you yeah the first guy all... to die was a black guy that we saw for all of two seconds that's yep. right that was so the first we, we'll one let go i'll yep. tell you we're watching that mess yep we love you but you ain't no discovery <laughs> oh, hey. no, uh, but you got raffi you got raffi so yeah, you know i yes. love raffi we'd love us some michelle heard we she need some more right. black aliens yes we do that we so, don't kill off everybody we just want to say thank you so much for listening to us uh please look for us y'all tell them where they can find us sabrina you can find me at Sabrina, S-U-B-R-I-N-A, at SciFiSisters.com. Fran. And you can find me at F-R-A-N-T, at SciFiSisters.com. And I'm Tamia, T-A-M-I-A, at SciFiSisters.com. You can also find us on Facebook, on our page, the Sci-Fi Sisters page, or come party with us on the Mothership. The sci-fi oh. sisters mothership. Oh, oh we're gonna make up a song for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Come party with us on the mothership. That's M-U-T-H-A-S-H-I-P. And we have our book club, the Sci-Fi Sisters Book Club. If you want to read more science fiction and fantasy by, about, and for black folks and other people of color, come join us there. So until next week, y'all. Peace, love, and hair grease. <laughs> Double. And that's sister. And that's sisters, S-I-S-T-A-S. -S -S. Thank you, friend. <laughs> <laughs>